Hello and welcome to Exchange Rates. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. By the end of this video, you'll be able to type in an amount, a base currency, a quoted currency, and Excel will automatically calculate the quoted currency amount. And I'll show you three different ways to do this. Let's head right into Excel. Exercise one. The first way we're gonna explore is by using the currency's data type. And here's how that works. You define the base and quote pairs. Then you select them. Then you go to data, and under data types, you click currencies. Now that just converted these text values into linked data types or rich data types. And these are really cool. You can click this icon and you can view a card and it shows all this data that's provided by the data provider, which in this case is Refinitiv. And you can scroll down and see all the information. And you can go to this one and you can check out all of this information. In addition to this data being displayed in a card, we can also have it displayed in cells. For example, let's select all of these and click on this insert data icon. Now we can select from all this rich data. The one we'll take right now is price. And now we see the exchange rate. So let's type in the base amount. So this will be 100 US dollars, 100 US dollars, and 100 pounds sterling. And to get the quoted currency amount, we'll set up a formula that is equal to this base amount times the exchange rate. And then we can fill this down. And let's widen this column. Now, since I filled this formula down, it also filled down the formatting. So let's grab this formatting. We'll go home, we'll go format painter, and we'll click this to apply that formatting there. There, that looks good. Now, the nice thing about linked data types like this is that they're dynamic and they'll be updated. If we wanna manually refresh these rates, what we can do is right click, data type, and refresh. And there we have it. So that's the first way, using the currency's data type. Let's take a look at another way. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. Did you know there's this free web API where you can specify the base and quoted currencies and also the amount, and it will return the quoted amount. And we can open this in any browser. And when we open it in a browser, this is the data that's returned. The amount, the base currency, the date, and the quoted amount. Now the good news is we can return this right into an Excel cell using the web service function. Let's check that out. We can go equals web service. Now we could enter that URL inside of quotes, but since we already have that URL in a cell, we can simply point this function to the value in C4. Close function and enter. And you can see that the same data is now returned right into the grid. That's pretty cool. Let's make this more dynamic. Instead of defining the amount right in the URL, let's join this base URL with the value that the user enters into cell C8. Let's cruise up here and let's remove 100 from the URL. Now let's cruise over here and let's update our formula. Equals web service, the base URL in C4. Then we're gonna use the ampersand or the concatenation operator to join that to the value that the users entered into C8. Close function and enter. And now we can see this is returned. And this is dynamic. Now what if I type in 200, enter? Well, Excel automatically retrieves the updated value. Now if we wanted the quoted amount, 171.88, right here in cell C9, there's a few different ways to extract that value. For example, one way is to use the copilot function. And this of course requires a copilot license. So if you don't have it, I'll show you another way to do it here in a sec. I'll say get the EUR amount from this text string. And then I'll point it to the value here in C6. Close function and enter. Okay, and it returns 171.88, perfect. Now, if you don't have the copilot function, we can go old school, no worries. We could use mid, we could use text before, we could use text after. In this case, I'm gonna use the text split function. And it looks like this, equals text split. And I'm gonna say, what's the text? The text is the value in C6. What's the column delimiter? Let's split this text string at every colon. So I'm gonna pass the delimiter surrounded in quotes. Comma, what's the row delimiter? And here we'll use the closing curly brace. And once again, I surround that in quotes. Close function and enter. And now it's split this text string into these results. And the result we want is right here, 171.88. So let's take a look at that. That's in the first row, and it's in the one, two, three, four, five, sixth column. So what we can do is we can wrap an index function around that and get the value from the first row and the sixth column. Close function and enter and now we got it. And again, there's a bunch of different ways we could extract that text. And by default, that's being returned as a text value. If we wanted to convert that into a number, we could simply wrap the value function around all of that. Enter, 
and now we've got it. And now this is dynamic. So if I change my base amount to 100, I get the quoted amount just like that. All right, so that's the second way that we're gonna cover using the web service function along with the free API. Now let's check out another way. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise three. There's another free API that simply requires the base currency and it'll return the exchange rates for all the other currencies. Now in this case, I wanna show you how to do this with Power Query. So what we do is go to data, get and transform data, and I'm gonna use this from web command. And here I'm simply gonna paste in the URL and click OK. And now I'll click connect. And this opens the Power Query editor. I want to leave a good audit trail in my workbook. So the first thing I'm gonna return is all of this. And then we'll come back and we'll return the actual rates. So what I'll do is I'll convert this into a table and then I'm gonna click close and load to. And I wanna return it to a table in an existing worksheet. I pick my cell and I click OK. Okay. And all of this is returned right into my Excel workbook. And I like this because I have these timestamps. Now let's return all the exchange rates. I'm gonna right click my existing query and I'm gonna select reference. This basically just sets up a new query that uses as its source the results of this first query. And then I'm gonna look at this rates row and I'm gonna select record. I'm gonna click convert into table. Now I'm gonna click close and load to table in an existing worksheet. I'm gonna pick a cell and I'm gonna click OK. And now we get all the exchange rates. Let me close this queries and connections panel. And let's scroll down. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, a couple things. First of all, let's refresh this. And second of all, let's write some formulas. So whenever I want updated rates, I can go to data and refresh all. Power Query runs and updates my workbook. Perfect. Okay, let's say I want to use these values. We'll go base, USD. We'll go amount, 100. We'll go quote, EUR, we'll go rate, and we'll go amount. Let's do USD, 100, JPY, and I think you get the idea. Now to retrieve the rate. Well, this is Excel, so there's many different ways to do this type of lookup. In this case, I'm just gonna use XLOOKUP. And I'm gonna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and I'm gonna return a value from here. Close function and enter and then I can fill this down. And now for the amount, I'm gonna go equals my base currency amount times my rate, enter. And then I can fill this down. And whenever I wanna update this whole thing, I just go to data, refresh all. Power Query pulls in the new rates and these formulas automatically update. So those are three ways to do exchange rates right inside of Excel. In other words, we don't have to go to the web, do a copy, come back to Excel and do a paste. All this stuff just flows right into Excel like magic. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 